Assalamu alaikum and welcome back once again to the day in African history with Baba Shaka. I'm Baba Shaka and today is June 1st, 2021. As I mentioned before, some of you may recall, we intend to spend this entire month focusing on the achievements and contributions of Africans in the field of science and technology. Now, despite suffering through the horrific system of slavery, sharecropping, and the Jim Crow era, early Africans in the Americas made countless contributions to science and technology. This lineage and culture of achievement, though, emerged at least 40,000 years ago in Africa. Unfortunately, few of us are aware of these accomplishments as history of Africa beyond ancient Egypt is seldom publicized. Sadly, the vast majority of discussions on the origins of science include only the Greeks, Romans, and other whites. But in fact, most of their discoveries came thousands of years after African developments. While the remarkable black civilization in Egypt remains alluring, there was sophistication and impressive inventions throughout ancient sub-Saharan Africa as well. They are just a handful of scholars in this area. The most prolific is the late Guyanese-born Ivan Van Sertimo, a former associate professor at Rutgers University. He once poignantly wrote that, quote, the nerve of the world has been deadened for centuries to the vibrations of African genius, unquote. Despite this, it still should be evident that the ancient people of Africa, like so many other ancients of the world, definitely had their genius. Even though there has been many attempts over the years to attribute that genius to others, including aliens from outer space. Surely, only a few of us know that many modern high school level concepts in mathematics first were developed in Africa, as was the first method of counting. More than 35,000 years ago, Egyptian scripted textbooks about math that included division and multipl multiplication of fractions and geometric formulas to calculate the areas and volumes of shapes. Distances and angles were calculated, algebraic equations were solved, and mathematically based predictions were made of the size of floods of the Nile. The ancient Egyptians considered a circle to have 360 degrees <clears throat> and estimated pi at 3.16. 8,000 years ago, people in present day the Democratic Republic of the Congo developed their own numeration system, as did the Yoruba people in what is now Western Nigeria. The Yoruba system was based on units of 20 instead of 10 and required an impressive amount of, subtract, of subtraction to identify different numbers. And scholars have lauded this system as it re required much abstract reasoning. Okay. Several ancient African cultures birthed discoveries in astronomy. Many of these were foundations on which we still rely, and some were so advanced that their mode of discovery still cannot be understood. Egyptians charted the movement of the sun and constellation and the cycles of the moon. They divided the year into 12 parts and developed a year-long calendar system containing 365 and one quarter days. Clocks were made with moving water and sundial clocks were used. A structure known as the African Stonehenge in present-day Kenya, which was constructed around 300 BC, was a remarkably accurate calendar. And then the Dogon people of Mali, they amassed a wealth of detailed astronomical observations. Many of their discoveries were so advanced that some modern scholars credit their discoveries instead to, get this, space aliens. Yes, space aliens. Or unknown European travelers. Even though the Dogon culture is steeped in ceremonial traditions centered on several space events, the Dogon knew of Saturn's rings, Jupiter's moons, and the spiral structure of the Milky Way and the orbit of the Sirius star system. Hundreds of years ago, they plotted orbits in this system accurately through the year 1990. They knew this system contained a primary star and a secondary star, which is now called Sirius B, of immense density and not visible to the naked eye. So it's obvious that they had developed telescopic instruments long before others. Many advances in metallurgy and tool making were made across the entirety of ancient Africa. 
These include steam engines, metal chisel and saws, copper and iron tools and weapons, nails, glue, carbon, steel, and bronze weapons, and art. These people were not playing. Advances in what is today Tanzania, Rwanda, and Uganda between 1500 and 2000 years ago surpassed those of Europeans then and were astonishing to Europeans when they learned of them. Ancient Tanzanian furnaces could reach 1800 degrees um, Celsius. That was two to 400 degrees warmer than those of the Romans. Various past African societies created sophisticated built environments. Of course, they are the engineering feats of the Egyptians, like the bafflingly raised obelisk and the more than 80 pyramids. The largest of the pyramids covers 13 acres and is made of 2.25 million blocks of stone. Later in the 12th century and much further south, there were hundreds of great cities in Zimbabwe and Mozambique. There, massive stone complexes were the hubs of the cities. One included a 250 meter long, 15,000 ton curved granite wall. The cities featured huge castle-like compounds with numerous rooms for, for specific tasks, such as iron smithing. In the 13th century, the empire of Mali boasted impressive cities, including Timbuktu, with grand palaces, mosques, and universities. Many treat treatments we use today were employed by several ancient peoples throughout Africa. Before your, the European invasion of Africa, medicine in what is now Egypt, Nigeria, South Africa, just to name a few places, was more advanced than medicines in Europe. Some of these practices were the use of plants with, let me get this straight, salicylic. Some, if, if you are um, a pharmacist, you know I'm talking about salicylic acid for pain, as in aspirin, kaolin for diarrhea, as in kaopectic, and extracts that were confirmed in the 20th century to kill gram-positive bacteria. Other plants used had anti-cancer properties, caused abortion, and treated malaria, and these have been shown to be as effective as many modern-day Western treatments. Furthermore, Africans discovered quabin, I think I'm saying that right, quabin, capsicum, and physotigmi, physotigmine, and resorpine. I don't um, know how to pronounce these words correctly, but all you pharmacists out there, you know what I'm talking about. Medical procedures performed in ancient Africa before they were performed in Europe included vaccination, we all familiar with that, right? Autopsy, limb traction, and the setting of broken bones, bullet removal, brain surgery, skin grafting, the filling of dental cavities, and insulation of false teeth, what is now known as the cesarean section, anesthesia, and tissue cauterization. In addition, African cultures perform surgeries on the antiseptic conditions universally when this concept was only emerging in Europe. Most of us learned that Europeans were the first to sail to the Americas. Uh, however, several lines of evidence suggest that ancient Africans sailed to the Americas and Asia hundreds of years before the Europeans. Thousands of miles of waterways across Africa were trade routes. Many ancient societies in Africa built a variety of boats, including small reed-based vessels, sailboats, and grander structures with many cabins and even cooking uh, facilities. The Mali and Songhai built boats 100 feet long and 13 feet wide that could carry up to 80 tons. Currents in this, south, in, currents in this part of West Africa were traits that would lead you right to South America and the Caribbean. Genetic evidence from plants and descriptions and art from societies inhabiting South America and the Caribbean at the time suggests small numbers of West Africans sailed to the east coast of the Americas and remained there. Contemporary scientists have reconstructed these ancient vessels and their fishing gear and have completed the transatlantic voyages successfully. All right. Now, around the same time as they were sailing to South America and the Caribbean, which is the 13th century, these ancient people also sailed to China and back, carrying elephants as cargo. Let me repeat that. These guys had elephants on the boats as cargo. That's how big these boats were. 
For more detailed information on ancient African voyages, I highly recommend the book They Came Before Columbus by the aforementioned Ivan Van Sertimo. It's a great read. Now, I must tell you, though, that book is going to be a little difficult to find. I tried looking for it last night, found it on, 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 on um, Amazon, but it was like $99. But you may want to call around to some um, smaller stores. If you live in, in the Washington, D.C. area, you may want to call Sankofa Books over there in Georgia Avenue by Howard University, see if they can find it for you. But that book will definitely give you the details of African voyages that predates Columbus. Now, people of African descent come from ancient, rich, and elaborate cultures that created a wealth of technologies in many areas. Hopefully, over time, there will be more studies in this area and more people will know of these great achievements. Now, for the remainder of this month, June 2021, we will, inshallah, attempt to bring you lessons of great African scientists and inventors who positively impacted our world. Some of them are long gone, while others are still with us. You will undoubtedly be surprised, possibly amazed, to learn that many of the things that affect our lives today were brought about by in innovators from the African world. So, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, this would on, no doubt be an ideal time to hit that subscribe button just below the screen. Please like and leave a comment down in the comment section. But... Most importantly, please share, especially with the young amongst us, because as you and I both know, this material is not taught in our schools. So, until tomorrow, inshallah, this is Baba Shaka with Today in African History. Masalam.